Okay. Welcome to our presentation with the title Social Community and Sales Interactions at a Multilingual Urban Street Market. We are, as said, Iram Duman and Greta Schulte, and we are working at the project Integrational Linguistic Resources in Highly Diverse Urban Settings, stretching the limits of reliability with Heike Riesbe, Ulrike Freiwald, Saika Nuxlan, and Catherine Schumann. Uh, this is a sub-project of the uh, Collaborative Resource Center of the University of Potsdam on the limits of variability in language. And we investigate the linguistic practices uh, and variation grammatically and ethnographically at an uh, urban street market. Uh, today we will talk about the construction and co-construction of social meaning through language and registered choices in sales interactions at the market from different cues such as appearance and perceived accent. So, um, today's big cities all around the world exhibit a large ethnographic diversity, which also brings, uh, brings along a large linguistic diversity. And such diversity engenders new forms of interaction through mixed linguistic resources and thus enables emergence of new and uh, context specific varieties. An example for such diverse settings is the Michael for Market in Berlin, North Carolina, specifically in located in Rotor Kids, where approximately 47.6% of the population has a so-called migration background. And the microphone market constitutes a highly diverse urban context by bringing together people of different social, cultural and linguistic backgrounds. The market is also known as the Turkish market, since uh, there are many sellers with Turkish background and uh, in the district lives a large Turkish-speaking community, and most of them are regular customers of the market. Uh, in order to investigate this uh, the ethno-linguistic diversity and its impact on linguistic practices, we have collected data through linguistic landscaping, linguistic soundscaping, social linguistic and ethnographic interviews, and participant observation. Uh, for the linguistic landscape study, each sign at the market area and a total of uh, and at four, uh, 55 stalls, a total of 460, uh, sorry, 26 uh, signs are analyzed. We have made audio and video recordings at four stalls, a fruits and vegetable stall, a coffee stall, a textile and utensil stall, and a Turkish bread and pastry stall. Uh, we conducted details interview, uh, detailed interviews with five cooperating sellers and short interviews with many other sellers and customers. In addition, uh, I made a three-month participant observation at the market, so I basically worked as a seller slash uh, undercover <laughs> linguistic <laughs> <animal. laughs> yeah, at the Braden Pastry Stall and took field notes. Uh, in the linguistic landscape study, we have found five, uh, nine languages in total: uh, German, Turkish, English, Arabic, Spanish, French, Italian, Latin, and Danish. And the interviewed sellers speak mostly Turkish and Arabic as uh, first language and German as second language. In addition to that, they know uh, some words or phrases from different languages, which they refer as uh, a little bit of everything. So <laughs> the diversity of the market became even more evident through uh, customer interviews we've conducted. Uh, we've interviewed a total of uh, 224 customers and they mentioned 45 different first languages and 17 different uh, second languages. Uh, the first languages are shown in the workload as uh, with respect to the uh, frequency. As you can see, German, Turkish, Arabic and English clearly stand out. Mm -hmm. uh, drawing on the collected data, German appears as a local uh, lingua franca and Turkish functions as the dominant heritage language, whereas English has a prominent place as the international language with a commercial value and or function through its language prestige. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, people have access to rich and mixed linguistic resources and thus we, all, we observe the, the use of new and non-canonical forms, code and register switchings and also intercomprehension. <laughs> So, um, as we have seen on the market, we have four different interaction types that's mostly market <coughs> uh, the linguistic lens, 
Okay, um, the sales conversations and private and small talks. So, um, these address uh, different customer groups, different sizes of customer groups. So the first two are mostly used to address larger customer groups uh, and they use uh, dominant languages. And the later two use, uh, con use individual, target individual customers. So um, and in this later we will focus on the part of sales conversation and we noticed in our um, research uh, also with Serkan that um, the sales conversations are very much function driven. So it's very much uh, language in Z2. So and, uh, we identified three interconnections, big functions, so there's a commercial function, a commun uh, communication function and an identity belonging function. And so um, the variation in constructed social meaning leads to variation in discourse structure and in variation in language choice. And we will show how that is done in the following. So to start, uh, so our goal is to uh, see where um, where is variation in the discourse in, in this data. So then uh, we, we thought, yeah, well, maybe there is some of the variation is not due to the multilingual setting or something like that, but due to the position in the discourse structure. So we set out to investigate the overall discourse structure in, say, in the sales interactions, because sales interactions at markets have not been, <laughs> they're not very much investigated. So we set out to do this and we identified seven phases. <coughs> it starts with an advertising, that's a pre-verbal phrase, so signs, uh, market crime, all kinds of this. Uh, then there's a greeting, a number of service. Uh, after that, there's um, customer ex express a desire to buy, a confirmation of purchase, a preparation and wrapping phase, a payment, and after that, oh, I, I wrote it in German, sorry. <laughs> I, I wrote the abschieden, so it's uh, goodbye. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, so, and we noticed that um, social meaning basically is the first identity construction uh, through appearance is done in the first phase of advertising. So, uh, in this phase, people choose the forms of address they will use and they set, uh, make a preset of languages of communication they can use in the uh, discourse that is about to start. So, and then there's a second uh, identity construction happening at the first greeting phase. Um, so, there you can either reject or validate your first uh, construction you made. Um, this also gives you cues for a topic in a small talk phase. So, you, you, uh, there's a change in type of talk and that's pretty visible in uh, other grammatical structures used and so on. That's predominantly happening in this, when, when there's a preparation phase, you know, when there's time. So, um, yeah, you will tell you how they choose. Yeah, okay. so the interviewed customers reported some decision factors about the language choices, uh, such as, some say, I always speak German here because it's the market language, and some I always speak Turkish at the market because here is a Tur here is a Turkish district, or I spoke language X because the, uh, the seller spoke it to me. I choose German or Turkish spontaneously. The seller can see if I'm Turk or Arab, so he or she speaks to me accordingly. The seller spoke to me in language X because he or she knows me, or I use language X because I know that the seller speaks it. So we can conclude that the language of Sale conversations are chosen according to an assumption uh, of a lingua franca, which could be German and Turkish in this context. Um, simple reaction to the spoken language, including the perceived accent. Pre knowledge about the language spoken by the interlocutor, appearance such as clothing, or spontaneous decisions. So these factors trigger another social positioning, the forms of address, uh, address used uh, at the market. So different forms of address used in different languages and each form uh, has another social meaning. In, in other words, they are used for specific persona, we can say. 
Um, and these are chosen according to the language or perceived accent uh, of the customers and the presumed ethnic or social belonging of the customers. As you can see in the example, a woman with a headscarf is socially positioned as a Muslim woman and presumably a Turkish woman and addressed as Abla, so mm -hmm. a sister in Turkish. Uh, by the seller, and the seller has an Arabic background, whereas a blonde woman, a, uh, presumably a German woman, is addressed as Madame, mm -hmm. since she is socially positioned as in another ethnic or religious uh, category, you can say. And the customers have also a different sensibilities for these uh, forms of address. Uh, for instance, uh, while I was working at the market, I addressed a woman as Madame, and she told me, why are you calling me Madame? I'm Turk. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they have their sensibilities too. And, and um, I presume that was because, this reaction was because uh, Madame in Turkey uh, has another social meaning actually. It is used for the non-Muslim woman of Arabic, uh, sorry, uh, of Armenian or Greek origin, so okay, I'm not in that category, she says in some way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we saw, so Ilan told you how they, you know, it can be based on the appearances, but then we noticed that in the first greeting phases, people who use code switchings uh, to you know, determine languages of communication, and in that they also pick up on, on the action accents they perceive the, the person has. So they make assumptions about the, the belonging there too. So in this example, um, I will play it to you. It doesn't play. No. Back, sorry. No. Hello. Was ist der Schnittschiff, Schrottschiff, Patata, Patata? So in this example, um, he picked up on phonetic cues that she might have a, a Spanish background. And so he used uh, Patata, Patata uh, to, uh, to address this in a um, but that so uh, we we would say it has a th threefold function here. So it it positions in a social meaning that it gets picked up in a small talk phase. I will show you later. It has a commercial function in this. So it's I know your language here. Buy my product. <laughs> I, I know. And it's it it also adds another po possibility for a language of communication. So I know a bit of Spanish. It, if English is not enough, we can talk in that language. Mm -hmm. So, um, in a later phase uh, in this interaction, he asks Española, and then she says, yeah, Española, and then Madrid. So, um, they, they use that, we found it very frequently that people use this information they get from their perceived accent to have a topic in small talk. Uh, to. Uh, yeah, to uh, address identity in, in, and belonging in, in this sense. So it's a spatial belonging. Yeah, and also fill the uh, preparation time <laughs> with a small talk. So, as I said, uh, we often observe that people try to speak the language of their interlocutors and when they do so, this evokes some kind of sympathy, especially when their heritage language is spoken. Mm -hmm. They are often more welcoming as they feel as they belong together, as they are one of them, so in the same social category or something. And this is an excerpt from the sales conversation between a young American woman uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the sellers of Turkish origin. Yeah, the conversation is held in Turkish by virtue of her accent. The sellers can tell that Turkish is not her first language and therefore they change their register. Her accent also triggers a small talk uh, within the sales conversation and we learned that the customer's family live in Riza, so in the Black Sea region in Turkey, but out of lack of time we decided not to give the whole conversation. Since the sellers are originally from the Black Sea region in Turkey, they show a special sympathy uh, towards her. 
Uh, as we can see in the excerpt, uh, there are some shiftings in language, simplifications, repetitions, uh, ratifications, and sellers often complete her sentences uh, and remind the uh, words she forgot, for example, by uh, line 5 and line 11. And um, so, as I said, they change their registers somehow and they simplify their languages and adopt the way uh, she speaks, actually. As uh, we see by, uh, that must be line 12, yeah. Uh, so, they normally say, Sen istemiyor musun? But she says, Sen istemiyor musun? So, she drops the question particle, mu. And instead, uh, there's an emphasis on the last syllable for the question. And also, uh, here, uh, she says, uh, he says, actually, Siz çok güzel Türkçe var. It literally means there is very nice English by you. So, <laughs> normally, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, there is very nice Turkish by you. Uh, so, he would normally say, Türkçe is çok güzel, so your Turkish is very nice. Uh, but uh, here we see, uh, Zero copula, so we have uh, as a uh, zero copula for a third person singular in Turkish, and in, uh, instead to be, they use var and yok, so there is and there is not, so they express uh, to be through var mm -hmm. here, and no possessive suffix nis here, so they imitate the foreigner talk somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we also found this yeah. for German, but a lot of time we did not present it. So, what we found is um, there's a big thing happening. So, if people don't give anything in terms where you can position them, so when they make, we have this uh, this uh, example here. He only basically ever says "chai." <laughs> okay, so he makes this one word utterance that is unspecific and he doesn't point so we, we do not did not talk about this but gestures are very important for us we have whole non gestural uh, whole gestural terms in our data so he doesn't point he do, does not have a perceive an accent you can pick up on and he doesn't do anything and as you can see um, it basically so it, the whole um, discourse restarts after a pause of by on three by three seconds and um, so it, it, it has this severe pauses. And so um, that's, uh, if, you, if they can't position the, the, the person, the interlocutor, it, it makes for a very bad uh, <laughs> discourse. That uh, it, this, this guy gets some tea. We never know if it's the tea he wanted. <laughs> so, because you can buy four different uh, chais at this booth, and so it's very much unspecified. So, if she could have put him in a box that says he's from Turkey, he would have gotten black tea by default. Mm -hmm. Because chai is, but because it's in Germany and she, she couldn't position him, she doesn't know. And um, as you can see later, she even asked for coffee because she's so unsure at what he's referencing. Chai <laughs> latte. Yeah, chai tea latte, mint tea. She has mint and anger, and so it's yeah. She doesn't know. So um, what we conclude is that in the influence of this cost structure on the market is basically in two phases that begat uh, two different over categories. One is Muslim and one is other than Muslim. So the, in the first identity construction that's based on appearance when people approach, it's um, the forms of address are made. They, they can be for Muslim. They are mostly Abla Genge, so they're based in um, Turkish loans or we are not sure if they're used as loans <coughs> or borrowings or whatever we will go into that and the uh, languages of the communication are set to Turkish slash Arabic or maybe German, that depends. And for other, the marks of other, it's Madame or a Junge Dame or not Turkish or Arabic and German as a default. And so they only start in German and then the customer can switch to English and they will ratify the language to English. And in the second identity construction phase, 
uh, that's based on language choice and the perceived accent, so through code switching and phonetics, um, there's either your first guess was correct or incorrect, and then a repair has to be made that's mostly made through code switchings, and the accent it plays a big role when you categorize people as other. So because there are so many tourists there, you don't know. I could be a German person, I could be a Swedish person, you don't know. So you have to see, uh, you go with the default German and then you have to pick on Exxon. So, and the uh, amount of the complexity of the discourse is uh, based on your fluency of the language. If, if it's perceived as high, the uh, discourse is more complex uh, and has less code switches and is uh, generally faster. If your fluency is set as low, uh, they, the uh, overall uh, morphological and syntactic complexity is low and there's much code switching going on. And accent is also used to add potential other languages and a small talk. Last slide. So, to sum up, <laughs> regarding linguistic behaviors, we see the use of different linguistic resources, such as forms of address, language, and register choices. And there is a constant game of guessing the language, country of origin, or ethnic belonging of the customers, uh, and the decisions regarding the languages of communications are made accordingly. And as we see, uh, we often see that people are trying to speak the language of their interlocutor, and we observe that the sellers do. Do, is, uh, do that towards uh, customers as a marketing strategy because they want to sell their products, uh, they want to show or gain sympathy, reflect multicultural nature of the market, and find common ground. And customers do that towards sellers to show and gain sympathy, find common ground, and sometimes to get discount because the sellers like it. And uh, sellers do that towards sellers out of solidarity uh, because they are in the same social category as sellers and they work uh, at different markets on different days of the uh, week so they share difficulties and they help each other etc and as we said perceived accent and presumed ethnic belonging change the, changes the discourse structure and the choices regarding the different addressing language and registers are index uh, different social positionings uh, they serve to facilitate communication and to accomplish successful sales. So, thank you for your attention. Questions, please. So, you told you about the outcome, so they want to have a good outcome by um, accommodating. Did you look at how well things turned out, whether they got measure in some sense, whether the deals turned out well, people got discounts, do that sort of thing? Uh, yes, it happens. So. And did you sort of correlate it, look at whether it was related to how well the discourse went? Yeah, we to, so that's, up, up, that's up, uh, under investigation by our colleague at the moment, so he's looking at this commercial function so, and he's looking how that is influencing the... So we don't have data on that yet, we just noticed this, it's under investigation. Thank you both. <laughs>